welcome to the next tutorial in power system stability this is the second part of the tutorial of the power system stability so the first problem in this tutorial is a 50 hertz 4 pole turbo generator rated at 20 mva 13.2 kilovolt has an inertia constant h of 9 kilowatt second per kv so basically the frequency of the alternator is given at 50 hertz this is a four pole alternator and the alternator rating which is given by 20 MBA S has the maximum voltage rating of 13.2 kV and the inertia constant is 9 kilowatt second per kV. So we have to determine the kinetic energy stored in the rotor at synchronous speed. So basically the turbo generator are basically the synchronous machine. So we have to determine what is the kinetic energy which is stored in the rotor at synchronous speed. Now we have to determine the acceleration if the input power less than the rotational losses is basically 25,000 horsepower with an electrical power developing at 15,000 kilowatt with a condition that the acceleration is computed for the generator is constant for a period of 15 cycles. So 15 cycles we are keeping the acceleration to be constant. The third thing that we need to determine is what is the change in the torque angle. So torque angle is given by delta in that period and the RPM at the end of the 15 cycle. So what is the change in the torque angle? So it will be equal to d delta by dt. So assuming that the generator is synchronized with a large system and has no accelerating torque before the 15 cycle period begins. So before the 15 cycle, you will not have any acceleration. So we have to determine the three important factors for this power system stability problem. So let us check the solution. So the famous uh, equation which is relating the initial constant of the machine with the kinetic energy and the machine rating is given by H which is the initial constant is equal to kinetic energy stored in megajoules. So the unit will be in megajoules in the numerator and the machine rating which is given by S in MVA rating of the machine. So both are in mega power on the numerator side and the denominator side. So obviously the H will be also in mega power. Now we have to determine what is the kinetic energy in mega joule. So we have been given the value of H that is the inertia constant which is equal to 9 and the machine rating is given as 20 MVA. So multiplying the two we get 180 mega joule as the kinetic energy uh, that is stored in the rotor of a synchronous machine. Also, we know that the accelerating power is basically the difference of the power of the electrical and the mechanical power. So here we have been given as 25,000 horsepower which we convert into watt. So we know that one horsepower is basically equal to around 746 watt. Then we use this expression to convert the 25,000 horsepower multiplied with 0.735 minus the 15,000 watt. So we are getting a megawatt of 3.375 as the power which is the accelerating power. This accelerating power is because the difference between the electrical and the mechanical power. If both are equal then the accelerating power will be zero. Now we know the equation of the swing equation. We know that d2 delta by dt square equal to accelerating power divided by m. So m is basically given by a expression gh by pi f. So the accelerating power we have already computed. Now we need to compute the value of m. We have been given the value of the initial constant h. We have been given the rating of the machine. The frequency is 50 hertz. So we can easily calculate the value of m as 1.146 megajoule second per radian. So if we substitute the value of m in our previous equation, then we get the change in the angle d2 delta by dt square is basically 2.945 radian per second square. So this is basically the value of the acceleration alpha, which is the answer for one of the term. Now we need to find the value of d delta by dt that is the change in the torque angle. So this can be possible when we integrate 
the above equation on the LHS side and the RHS side if you do it then we find that d2 delta by dt square if you multiply it on the both the expression 2 delta by dt that we often do to find the value of d delta by dt square we do it so we find 5.89 delta plus some constant a which can be found out from the boundary condition. So what is the boundary condition is that at time t equal to 0 there was no acceleration so obviously the value of the so the value of the constant a will be equal to 0. So once we get the value of the constant a to be 0 we can substitute in the previous equation and we find that d delta by dt is basically under root of 5.89 under root of delta. Then we need to find the value of delta from this equation so we can take the delta on one side and time on one side and we try to integrate on both the side so we find that delta is equal to 1.47258 into t square that is the time square this we get it after some steps of manipulations in the mathematics so now the value of this time we can get it from the 15 cycles so basically the frequency is given to be 50 hertz so 15 by 50 we get equal to 0 0.3 second now this 0 0.3 second we substitute in the previous expression to find the value of the torque angle delta. So delta we get uh, 1.47258 multiplied with 0 0.3 square. So we get 0 0.09. It is equal to 0 0.1325 and the angle is in radian. However, we compute the delta in electrical degrees. So we convert the radian into electrical degrees and we get 7.5955. Now once we get the value of delta, then we can have we know that d delta by dt is basically 8.4 rpm from the previous equation because it is equal to the value of in the under root of delta. So this delta we can substitute in the previous equation to get the value of d delta by dt first in radian per second and then in rpm that is revolution per minute. Now the question was asked that what is the rotor speed at the end of the 15 cycles. So we have been given that this is a four pole machine and frequency of the supply is 15 hertz. So basically if we want to find the speed, the synchronous speed 120 F by P. So this will give equal to 1500 RPM. So 1500 RPM and we are getting the change in the torque angle as 8.4. So if we add 8.4 here, so we get 1500 8.4 RPM as the change in the rotor speed at the end of 15 cycles. So this completes the problem number one. Problem number two, we have a 50 hertz synchronous generator is connected to an infinite bus. So infinite bus means where the voltage remains constant. So we can take the infinite bus to be one angle zero because this is in per unit through a line. So a synchronous generator is connected to infinite bus through a line. So we can obtain the single line diagram of this power system. The per unit reactances of the generator line are given to be Z0.3 and Z0.2 per unit respectively. So we have been given the reactance of the generator as well as the line. The generator no load voltage is 1.1 and infinite bus is 1.0. So at the two extreme end, one extreme end we have the generator and another extreme end we have the bus. So both voltages are given and there is a reactance between it. So this is the single line diagram of this simple power system. The initial constant is also given which is equal to 3 megawatt second per MVA. Now we have to determine the frequency of natural oscillations if the generator is loaded at two cases. One is 60 percent and another is 75 percent of its maximum power transfer capacity. So 60% of the maximum power transfer capacity and 75% of the maximum power transfer capacity and small disturbances of power is already given to us. So can we find at these two particular uh, loading what is the natural frequency of oscillation that is the question in problem number two. So we see the solution now we know that if the system is operating initially under the steady state condition a small perturbation that is the disturbance in power will make the rotor to oscillate. This is the, from the general theory that we have discussed in the power system lecture. 
Now, the natural frequency of oscillation is given by the formula under root of change in electrical power with respect to the torque angle at some initial value of the delta naught divided by m. So, m we know we understood how to obtain from the equation of gh by pi f. So, f being the supply frequency and h being the initial constant, g is the rating of the machine. So, let us see the solution for 60 percent loading first and then we will go for 70 percent, 75 percent loading. And we also know that the famous equation of DPE delta equal to 2 extreme voltage V1, V2 divided by the total reactance of the system multiplied with cos delta. So here from this expression we can substitute the value of the generator voltage that is 1.1, the infinite bus voltage that is 1 and the reactance of the entire system is 0 0.5 which is the summation of the generator and the light. So, we have cos delta naught. Now, if we substitute the delta naught to be 0.8, then we are getting 1.76. So, basically we are getting from the loading, so 60% loading we have. So, it means that sine delta naught is equal to 0.6 by 1 which is 0.6. So, here we get the value of cos delta naught. So, we know the value of sine delta naught. So, we can calculate the value of cos delta naught to be 0.8. So, this gives 1.76 as the value of the change in the power with respect to the torque angle and the value of m we calculate from the expression gh by pi f. Here the initial constant is given, the rating of the machine is given and the frequency is also given which comes to be 0.019. So, the natural frequency of oscillation formula that we have seen is basically under root of del change in the power with respect to torque angle at a value of delta naught divided by the value of m. So, m we have calculated as 0.019, dPe by d delta we have calculated as 1.76 at a value of delta naught that is 60 percent loading. So, we get the natural frequency of oscillation is 1.53 hertz. Now, the same thing if we do for 75 percent loading. So, here sine delta naught will be equal to 0.75. So, correspondingly we need to find what is the value of delta naught and we put the value of delta naught as cos delta naught here in the expression of dPe by d delta. This remains the constant because the voltage of the generator infinite bus and the total reactance of the system remains the constant. So, dPe by d delta will give you 1.455. So, the natural frequency of oscillation again we want to calculate. So, under root of the change in the power which is equal to 1.455 divided by the value of m which is constant we have already calculated in the previous expression that is 0.019 will give you 8.750 radian second. So, if radian per second so here we can calculate in terms of hertz that is 1.39 hertz. So, we see that at different loading what is the natural frequency of oscillation. The last problem for today's tutorial is problem third which is basically a three phase fault has occurred at a point P. Find the critical clearing angle for clearing the fault with simultaneous opening of the breakers 1 and 2. So, when the fault has occurred the breaker 1 and 2 will open and the system will uh, segregate from the rest part of the system. So, the reactance values are indicated and the generator is delivering 1 per unit power at the instant proceeding the fault. So, here we have the generator G and here we have the reactance of the generator J0.25. This is basically the reactance of the one of the transmission line which is J0.5. We have another transmission line J0.05 connected with the infinite bus. So, infinite bus will have the constant potential of one angle zero and the generator is delivering power at 1.2 per unit. So, let us see what has happened. So, under the normal operation we have to find that is the pre-fault condition when there is no fault in the system. So, we have to find the total reactances of the system. So, total reactances of the system will have these two reactances will be in parallel which will be the summation of the reactances of the generator and the other line. So, we have J0.25 and the reactances of the two parallel lines we have. So, we can calculate the parallel operation of this plus the reactance of the 
third line. So here we have the first generator, then these two are in parallel, second, and we have the third reactance. And this is under the pre-fault condition. So once we have obtained the reactance, total reactance, we can put it in the formula of the power. We have seen the formula of the power in the previous expression as it is V1, V2 by X into sine delta. Okay. So here what we do is that uh, we know the uh, voltage of the generator that is 1.2 per unit, the voltage of the infinite bus that is 1 per unit and the total reactances we have obtained as 0.522 per unit and the value of sine delta is unknown to us that is 2.3 sine delta. Now the pre found operating power angle is given by 1 which is 2.3 sine delta naught. So this is under the pre fault condition. Uh, it was operating very steadily. So we can obtain the value of delta naught from the sine inverse. So we get 25.8 which is correspondingly to equal to 0 0.5. 4, 5 radians. So once we have obtained the value of delta naught, we can proceed. Now, now the during fault there will be no power transferred to the system and PE at that second condition will be equal to zero. So we can see that the opening of the circuit breaker has now brought these two one in the grounded condition and this part of the system is disconnected from the next part of the system. So post fault operation, what has happened in the post fault operation? So first we have to obtain the value of the total reactances. So this will remain the first condition. Second condition, these two breaker has opened. So we will not take this into account. And the second reactance will be J0.5. And the third reactance will be J0.05, which will give you the total reactances as J0.8. Now we can put it in the formula of V1, V2 by X into sine of delta. So here we see that V1 is same 1.2 and V2 is same 1 total reactance we have calculated 0 0.8. So sine delta we have to put it. So we can find that the delta max which will be for the maximum permissible angle, we know the equal area criterion. So under the equal area criterion, so when the fault A1 will be equal to A2, then only we will get the critical clearing angle delta CR. So basically we have already calculated the value of delta naught, which is equal to 0 0.45 radian. So if we calculated the delta max is basically pi minus sine inverse of the one by delta naught, so we get it 2.41 radian. So delta naught and delta max we have calculated. It means that to apply the equal area criterion or a critical angle leading, uh, critical clearing angle delta C, we get an expression of the area A1. So two areas we need to calculate it. The area A1 is equal to PM, that is the mechanical power, uh, multiplied with the difference of the angle of critical clearing angle and the delta naught. So here the mechanical power is 1 and delta CR minus 0 0.45. We are unknown this delta CR which we need to calculate. So this is our first expression that we get from A1. Similarly, if we calculate the value of A2 that is the second area which is the difference of the power in the third condition that is after the fault minus the default condition we get 1.5 sin delta minus 1 and the integrating is from the critical clearing angle delta c to 2.41 that is the maximum value of the critical clearing angle. So from this integrated integration we get an expression of 1.5 cos delta cr plus delta cr minus 1.293. We know that applying equal area criterion we can put it A1 is equal to A2, then only we can find the critical clearing angle. So the first e equation and the second equations are equated and we try to find the value of the delta CR that is the critical clearing angle which comes to be 55.8 degree which satisfied the equal area criterion. So we have discussed three important problems on power system stability. So power system stability problems are divided into two different tutorials, tutorial 17 and tutorial 18. So do watch both the tutorials as well as the lecture associated with it. It will clear all the concepts as well as the doubt related to power system state. Thank you for now. See you in the next lecture.